In part one, I talked about those three important things I need to look at more closely to determine whether I want to fix this car, and that was the extent of the rust, if we got any hidden or collateral structural damage, and of course the condition of the engine. Now those aren't the only things that I'm considering or thinking about. A number of you said, well, what about this? What about that? Nobody said anything about checking with your wife. <laughs> or do you have a place that you can park it and keep it out of sight of your neighbors? But for me, there's a couple of things that are really important. One of them is verification of the mileage. You know, some of you said, well, figure out how much it's gonna cost, add the cost of the parts, add your shop rate, do all this and figure out whether it's worth it. Another person said, well, if you love it, do it. So there's a balance there. If I looked at this car here and only thought about my shop rate, my time, my money, and whether or not I could sell it for more than I had into it, you know, I might not do it. So this thing of, about do you love it is really a key issue here. And believe it or not, I think this thing is so unique, the color, and I know some of you don't like the color, but it is so unique. I've never seen that green interior in a 116 before, not in MB text. I've seen it in uh, cloth. I may fix this because I like the car, all right? But right now, just before I rolled it in, I wanna show you some of the things that I look at to determine if the mileage is accurate. Remember, once again, this is showing 120,000 miles. I drove the car around the block and the odometer is working. That doesn't mean it's always been working. So there's a couple of things I look at closely. The very first thing I look at, believe it or not, is the top of the steering wheel. Let me show you what the steering wheel looks like. And I also look at the brake pedal. These padded rubberized steering wheels can really give you a clue on mileage. I've done another video on this in the past, but if the steering wheel is smooth up here and smooth on the sides, then it has a lot more than 120,000 miles. Usually what I've seen is over 150,000 miles, you'll start to get wear right up along the top. When it approaches 200,000 miles, you'll have wear or smoothness from the top all the way down the side here where people hold on to the wheel. This wheel has got the original texture showing all the way across the top. You can see it there, see that? There's no smoothness there. So I think the mileage as far as this steering wheel is accurate. Now I'm also going to look at the brake pedal rubber piece and looking down there, you can see that inside edge on the right side is not worn off. Once again, when they get much over 150,000 miles, you'll start to see the rubber brake pedal wear excessively on that right side. Of course, somebody could have changed the pedal pad, but that's something you're gonna have to look at. The other thing I consider is the amount of steering play. And I've learned that uh, once these cars get up to about 140 to 160,000 miles, they start getting more steering play. Now this one, I'm only moving it less than half an inch and I get tire movement up there. So, so in terms of steering box wear, 120,000 miles looks pretty accurate also. Now there's one more thing I check and that's the amount of blow-by in the diesel engine. Those of you who've been around these diesel engines will recognize this is the sound of a healthy engine. Look at the lack of vibration and shake. A little bit of shake in the air cleaner, but the air cleaner mounts are broken. Now the blow-by test I do is I check for cap dance. All I do is take the oil filler cap and completely loosen it up and let go of it. Look at that cap. It's hardly dancing at all. Now, if the cap is rattling and rolling, I've seen some of these where the cap literally blows right off the top of the engine. But this one is hardly moving. I think the condition of this engine also verifies the mileage at 120,000 miles. Now, it's going to take a valve adjustment and a compression test to really confirm the internal health of the engine. So we're gonna roll it into the shop now. In part three, I'll come back and give you the results of the inspection in those three areas we discussed earlier.